He wasn't a stranger. We had just never met in person. Right, I said with a laugh. So he was a stranger. <laughs> Blake smirked. Mark, I just want you to know that I really love you as a person. And to make sure I understood exactly what he was saying, he continued, as a friend, you're an amazing person. You're so generous and like no one I've ever met before. Wait a second. Last time that we had this conversation, we decided we should be friends. But now you're going round in circles. Tell me, will this deja vu never end? <laughs> cafeterias for 10 to 20 people a night can be taxing on one's knees. While we were making love, fuck you. 
Blake, sweating like OJ in a lineup, kept saying things like, God, we would be so good together. Listen, really didn't need you to tell me that you loved me if you just wanted to come over for one more fuck before going on tour, but what else? What happened next, you ask? Well, it would take another four hours to explain, so I'll timeline that shit to save time and because I have to pee. That September, I sent Blake on his way, and less than 48 hours after doing so, his ex-boyfriend Max and I bumped into each other and quickly struck up a fast friendship. I had recognized Max because earlier in the summer, when I had arranged tickets for Blake to see a show, he breezed up to the theater with his ex-boyfriend. Because that's classic. Max was all too eager to tell me about Blake's machinations the previous summer involving Jerome, myself, and a host of other people Blake had canoodled with, leading Blake and I to have our final confrontation, or so I thought. While all this was going down, Max, with his halitosis breath and skinny girl arms, pretended to be falling through in order to drive that final nail in the Mark and Blake, Blake coffin. And when I finally called his bluff, I stopped speaking to him as well. All was quiet on the sociopathic front until March of this year when Max reached out to congratulate me on my latest book reading. I agreed to meet him for lunch the following week for a meal that rivaled anything those real housewives of New York could have mustered up in their wildest dreams. Max apologized for his calculating behavior the previous fall and also told me that he hadn't been speaking to Blake since Christmas time. As Max and I were beginning to rebuild our friendship, I got a late night ass out from Blake. Blake once again called and told me that he loved me and blah, 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 blah. And he, as he was still on his epic non-equity escapades and wouldn't be returning until for another month. Meanwhile, I must have been smoking some serious crystal meth to have believed any of this. When Max caught wind of the fact that Blake and I were yet again trying to rebuild our relationship, he thought that then would be a good time to reach out to Blake after having not spoken to him for five months, resulting in my not speaking to Max anymore. Later that day, I walked into a wall and still had no idea why I was still... Well, these two were constantly commissioned to ruin my life. When I reached out to Max to talk about what was going on, he ignored me. Once Blake returned, the attention whore sat and text messaged Max throughout our entire dinner, forcing me to threaten Max with a punch to the face, a threat that I have unfortunately never got to cash in on. I no longer speak to either of them because after a year and a half apart, this dream team decided to get back together because no one else will ever want them. Yes. Blake is off doing another, um, yet another non-equity tour, while Max is the stage manager of a very popular Broadway show. Now, I'm not what? someone to break another person's anonymity. Don't stop believing! <laughs> but the show is rock <laughs> Whoops. The most mediocre excuse for a man I've ever met, stage manages the most mediocre excuse for a Broadway show. The both of you. There's so much hate in this. Okay, so wait, wait. Is it over now? Are, are, are we missing something? Wait, are you talking about the time that I dated the man who only wore red shirts and after dating for several months, he used to sleep with me and when I brought it up, he dumped me via text message? No. Or are you thinking about the time that I dated the fashion designer who went to China on business and never returned? No. I think there was some sort of broke down palace sort of situation going on there. <laughs> or are you talking about the guy who I dated and had sex with me and only revealed on day three that he was not only in a six year relationship but had children as well? No, I'm talking about the happy ending. Oh, boo boo, this is a book reading called How to Date a Fucking Loser. It's like a learning annex class on how to date a fucking idiot. And I think we've all, you know, learned a valuable lesson here tonight. I've learned never to date a married man. Again. <laughs> We've all learned something. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight.